Stay up on the latest this hurricane season. Please subscribe for future updates. Hey everybody and welcome back for another update here on the latest on Tropical Storm Ernesto. I'm Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman. And before we get started to give you an update on this, if you have not subscribed yet to the channel, please consider it. Just hit that subscribe button if you can do me that favor. And uh, please leave me a thumbs up. Give me a comment down below. It really does help and we're trying to get this information out to the greater YouTube universe. All right, we're going to first start off by taking a look here at the latest here on the radar imagery coming out of Puerto Rico. Center of circulation is just coming through the Windward Islands right now, so it's a little bit far away, but we are seeing some of these outer feeder bands starting to come into uh, areas through the British uh, uh, Virgin Islands and U.S. Virgin Islands, as well as coming into Puerto Rico itself, and those conditions will be deteriorating here uh, throughout the day. We can look at Anquila here, and uh, again, not looking too bad here. Get a little bit of rain there falling here for this morning. And I'll be watching the kind of a variety of cameras here across the Caribbean here. You see some of the winds here picking up across St. Croix and uh, St. John uh, looking at some cloudy conditions there. So it'll be kind of a squally day here across the portions of the Caribbean here as this tropical storm, which is getting better organized, by the way, starts to move on through the area. All right, so we're talking about this zone right here as this as storm is developing in exactly where you would look historically Climatologically speaking, when you look back at the last 100 years, you notice there we've had 70 named storms and uh, there's our bullseye right there. And that's exactly where this uh, storm is coming from as it's making its way here, kind of clipping the Caribbean here, kind of, kind of sneaking here into the uh, middle portion of the Atlantic as we go here through the next several days. So what we're seeing here, comparatively speaking, what we were seeing 24 hours ago is you've got a storm system that's got a pretty good outflow here. We've got definitely got more thunderstorms around the center of circulation as we've got some pretty warm waters. You know, that's what the, these systems do. They feed off the warm waters of the Atlantic and the tropics and helps uh, kind of deal with an imbalance. You know, takes the heat that builds up here in the, the tropics and takes it poleworth. And as we go in a little bit closer here, you can see the better perspective here. A very nice looking organized system. A fairly average size, I would say. Not overly small, but not overly big either as far as the composite size of the storm. And it should remain a tropical storm until it gets north of Puerto Rico. At least that's what the National Hurricane Center is thinking at this moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at the latest coordinates on this system. Again, we're at 16.2 north, 61.3 west, and uh, top sustained winds at 40 miles per hour. Moving west at 20, so it has slowed down a little bit, which is something I, I definitely was saying yesterday it needed to do. It was moving at 28 miles per hour. That's a little bit fast for a tropical system to try to get organized when it's moving a little bit, a little bit uh, too fast. Because what typically happens sometimes is that the center of circulation can actually outrun the thunderstorms with it. So it definitely needed to slow down a little bit. You notice the blue areas in here, these are your tropical storm warnings here through the islands and up through Puerto Rico. And for the time being, the National Hurricane Center says this is not going to make um, major hurricane status. That's a category three. That's 115 mile per hour or greater. And um, I'm not so sure about that. I, th I think there's a good, I think there's a better 50% chance that we get a category uh, three hurricane. Also knows this path takes you right over Bermuda here. Now, of course, this is going into Sunday morning. We got a lot of time to watch this. And of course, we got this cone here. So it can be this side or this side, depending on the exact track and, and this thing's going to wobble as it goes northward it's also going to slow down a little bit it's got a couple of reasons for that and i'll explain why here in just a second now here is the tropical model track again most of the models in very good agreement as this thing's going to kind of wobble northward here over the next five days notice we got a couple of outliers here uh, trying to sneak this in Florida. Don't worry, boy, the risk of this is a very minimal. This thing's going to get picked up northward in response to a, a pretty strong trough, a little unusual to see at the end of August. It's going to help steer this thing to the north, and not to mention the fact that we've had a kind of a retreating uh, area of high pressure, the high pressure ridge in the Atlantic. It's very, very far off to the west, or actually closer to the Azores. Now, as we look at the model intensity tracks, again, a lot of the models are taking this thing pretty much close to a Cat 3. That's where I think we're probably going to get. Even some of this is even going up into Cat 4 status here. Uh, but I think uh, I think we're probably very good likely we're going to see a Cat 3. One thing that the models do not do a very good job on when it comes to uh, hurricane intensity, they tend to underestimate them just a little bit, at least from what I've seen uh, the last few years, that's for sure. All right, let's take a look at one of these hurricane models here. So we're going to watch this track here. It's going to take us right through the islands really starts to strengthen. Look at that pressure falls down into the 950s. If it gets that low, I think it's a pretty good chance you're going to see a Category 3 storm. 
Now, the East Coast, you're not going to worry about this, but if you're going to be going to the beaches this weekend, anywhere from New Jersey down toward Florida, you're going to have some rough surfing here, folks. This is going to really kick up the waves quite a bit here, so rip currents will definitely be a problem along the eastern seaboard as well as maybe some beach erosion there as well whenever you get a big hurricane out into the Atlantic. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest European model run here. We'll go ahead and step you through this here as I go ahead and step out of the way here. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this system as we uh, go through the next several uh, several days or so. A couple things I do want to point out for you here is you see this precipitation. This is associated with a with a trough that's kind of coming off here right now. And uh, that is uh, what's, uh, what's going to be steering this. you got this trough right here. We've got a high pressure, which is back over here, which is, a little, like I said, a little bit further off toward the west. So it's going to be steering around the periphery of that high in response to that trough. So whenever you get a trough of low pressure, you know, you get a tropical system, they're going to look for the path of least resistance. So it's going to be uh, pulled northward, almost like a magnet here, as it goes uh, northward here. Uh, going into the next couple of days. So let's go ahead and track this forward here. We're going to watch that timestamp in that upper right hand corner here as we watch the system get organized and it gets pulled northward here. Now that trough that was uh, kind of pulling it northward, it's going to start to flatten out a little bit. So it's going to, going to get stuck. There's also going to be a bit of high pressure ridging that's going to take place over the top of the system. And as a result of that, with the high pressure in the upper levels, it's going to allow all, all, all that heat that comes in through the middle of the storm it really be able to evacuate across the central. Think of the think of it of an eye of a hurricane, almost like a chimney. So it's going to allow the heat to come through, through the middle and then kind of evacuate out the top here. That's why I think we're going to see some rapid intensification here as this storm gets close to the island of Bermuda. And then it's going to kind of wait back here a little bit and wait for this next trough. We got another trough here that's going to be coming off the eastern seaboard here. And what this is going to do is it's going to pick this thing up and it's going to whoop going to take it off uh, very quickly across the northern Atlantic here uh, as we go into uh, pa past this upcoming weekend, obviously, as this thing really starts to take off here. So let me go ahead and clear this out, and we'll, again, take you through here the rest of this 10-day model run here. And again, watch it. Boom, it just really takes off. Once it, It's like giving it a real kick in the pants. It's going to really take off very fast across the northern Atlantic and gets on out of here. Now, we'll say, as looking at beyond this, once the storm goes on by, I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, additional activity uh, down and toward the intertropical conversion zone. So we're gonna get a, we'll get a brief break here across this area right now, but we'll wait for that next disturbance. You know, anything can flare up at a moment's notice, so we got to watch that closely. But there's a couple of reasons why I think we're going to have to watch this very closely uh, beyond this, as I think conditions are going to improve out in the tropics uh, that have been a bit of a problem here, uh, really for most of the tropical season and that's been with the Saharan dust. This is the model here and I want to I want to show you this and why this is important. Okay. You see the amount of dust that's out here on this model run right here right now. So what I want to do is I want to take you through this and watch what happens here as we progress here over the this model run. You're going to notice that the amount of Saharan dust that's out here really starts to diminish. Okay. It goes down. That's important because What's been a very big inhibiting factor out in, in the tropics is the amount of dust that's been out there. So look at how concentrated it has been across the central Atlantic and then what we're expecting the forecast wise for it to be by the time that we get to, say, next week going into toward August the 22nd. So, so we're about nine days away, but it really, really does significantly drops off here across the Atlantic. Here's a pretty good plume here coming off Africa, but overall trend is downward here across the Atlantic. So uh, this will be a big deal. So as we get closer and closer to the peak of the hurricane season, uh, the amount of Saharan dust out there does need to diminish. And I believe that is going to be the case, at least looking at what the models are currently expecting across that area here uh, as we go through the next 10 days. So uh, the other thing, again, remember, we're heading toward the peak of the hurricane season. We get about two-thirds of our activity uh, between August 20th and October 10th. So, uh, you know, things are really going to start to pick up a little bit. We only get about four named storms during the month of August. So as we go deeper into the hurricane season, especially once we get past the 20th, things are going to get hot and they're going to get busy quite a bit. So if you'd like to continue to stay up on the latest on the tropics and you'd like to get these updates, uh, please uh, join the family here. Come on board. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, if you got something you'd like to see to be included in these reports, please leave a comment down below. I always do appreciate the feedback. All right, that's your update for now. You guys take it easy. We'll see you the next time. Until then, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.